Hello again. Um, I haven't done one of the uh, videos talking about movies that I love and everybody else hates in a long time, so figured I kind of needed to do that. Um, I'm going to talk today about a much maligned sequel, uh, as several of these seem to be, uh, but everybody really hates on this movie. Now, this is an old box set, and I need to actually pick up all of these movies um, on Blu-ray, except for the fourth one. I'll get to that. But I'm going to talk today about The Karate Kid Part 3. And I'm also going to talk briefly about the fact that I think that Karate Kid Part 2 is, while it's not, uh, it's not looked down upon the same way that 3 is, I actually do think it's one of the most underappreciated and best sequels of all time, period. Um, but I'll get to that. Uh, Karate Kid 3, uh, I remember going to see this movie in 1989 when it came out with my mother, and she, I, I remember her getting very exasperated in the movie theater because it was mainly with uh, Ralph Maggio's performance, and it's funny because I didn't really pick up on that until much later, probably because I was kind of a manic kid and I was going off in a million directions all the time, but Ralph Maggio, I don't know if the director told him to act this way, which I kind of doubt because the same person who directed the original Karate Kid and the original Rocky and Rocky V, which strangely enough, John G. Avildsen, same director who did Rocky V and everyone hates Rocky V and everyone hates the Karate Kid 3 and I don't understand it. Um, actually, he directed uh, Karate Kid 2 as well. So same director for all three Karate Kids, right? I don't, I would suspect because of that, that the director did not tell Ralph Macchio to act this way. And I hate, it, that pains me to say because I really like Ralph Macchio. I've met Ralph Macchio. Uh, my name's Daniel and he actually called me the real Daniel son, highlight of my young adult life or uh, middle age life, I guess, at this point. I am 40. Um, but Credit Kid 3, I do think that the worst aspect of it is um, Ralph Macchio's acting. And I don't know if it's because he seems hyped up on something for most of it. Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to speak out of turn and saying he was, it was any kind of substance, but I don't know. He seems very out of character, um, for the character that he was in the first two. Um, now, I, I still like Karate Kid 3, though, because it brings, it, I, I don't even, I, see, I can't even really say it brings everything full circle. It's mainly the nostalgia factor for me personally, I'm going to be honest about that. It is the nostalgia factor, I saw it in the theaters. Um, I will agree 100%. It is not up to the standards set by the first and second Karate Kids. However, it's nowhere near, nowhere near the abomination that was the next Karate Kid. Even though it's, it's in this set, I don't acknowledge that this this does not exist. It's, no. This is, this is my set right here. Uh, yeah, next Karate Kid, no. It's the Karate Kid and... The, the remake, no, it's The Karate Kid. It's not, it's not you know, this generation's Karate Kid. It's The Karate Kid. But anyway, uh, third movie, the villain is hysterical. This is one of those movies, the best drinking game I ever had in my life was watching the Karate Kid trilogy all the way through. And every time Daniel gets hit, punched, knocked to the ground, whatever, you take a shot. I don't think I've ever been that drunk since. It was really, really rough. Um, so yeah, uh, by the time you get to Karate Kid 3, doing that, I'm, I'm not gonna base the film strictly on what is a good drinking game. However, I will say that if you do that, by the time you get to Karate Kid 3, you will have the time of your life watching that film. Uh, what cracks me up about watching the movies in release order, I'm gonna get to that in just a second because I have something big to say about that, is, how Daniel's karate seems to get worse, not better, as the films progress, which is kind of hysterical. Uh, because if you think about it, in the first movie, I mean, he, you know, he can be forgiven for not knowing a whole lot because he didn't know a whole lot. He, you know, he learned Karate Kid, or he'd learned uh, karate, I'm sorry, at the uh, YMCA. In the second movie, he actually fends himself off fairly well. Um, Especially given the fact that he's facing off against the star student of, uh, you know, Miyagi's best friend. I mean, and they were both, they both had the same teacher, Miyagi's father. So, um, 
yeah, Karate Kid 3, uh, I acknowledge that it's not as good as the others. Um, the worst thing about Karate Kid 3, outside of Ralph Macchio's acting, is probably, unfortunately, the final fight. Because if you think about the logistics of that, if you don't know, if you haven't seen the movie, well, you should stop this and watch and go see the movie. You should watch all three of the movies. Uh, but you should you should give three a chance again, because it, it's it, you have to watch it as a, an it's so bad it's good movie. And it is. It's so entertaining. Um, the villains really are just such caricatures of, I mean, you know, let's be honest, the villains were always caricatures in all three Karate Kid films, but especially in part three. I mean, the, the villain is basically a mustache twirling, if he had a mustache, uh, ponytail wearing, giggling, uh, sadistic dude, and his name is Terry Silver, okay? And he, he mistrains Daniel so that he learns all the wrong things. Anyway, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm spoiler territory now, for those of you who care. Spoiler from 1989, uh, at the end of the movie, they set up this scenario where the bad guy is going to get a point and then he's going to lose a point by inflicting some kind of bodily harm on Daniel. So he's going to basically just keep the match going um, and as long as he can to, to, to hurt Daniel as they go along. This, uh, this was funny for a couple of reasons. One, because nothing so severe happens to Daniel in this fight as what happened to him in the first fight. That's number one. Uh, number two the way Daniel ultimately wins the fight is by doing a kata routine that Mr. Miyagi teaches him. It's supposed to be the family kata, but from what I've heard from a couple of people who've actually taken karate, it's like the first move that you learn, the like meditation karate move before you learn to actually fight. <laughs> so it's just hysterical. That he, but anyway, he does this move and the guy's just looking at him like, what's he doing? And he's confused, but that only lasts for a second. And then Daniel stops doing the kata. So I don't know how that gives him any kind of advantage except the guy was momentarily phased. And then he goes in for like the kill shot. He's gonna get the winning point. At this point, Daniel's not doing the kata anymore. And Daniel just grabs his arm and throws him over his head and gets the final point himself. And you're supposed to believe after that that the bad guy doesn't just go and beat him up after the tournament because he totally owned him for the entire rest of the fight. Anyway. I know I'm not I'm not making my case for this film, but it's so entertaining and it's so stupid. It, you have to look at it as it's so bad it's good. I will defend Karate Kid 3 because it's the original trilogy. Next Karate Kid, terrible, terrible, terrible. Don't 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 even go there. What I wanted to get to about order, okay? This film order makes no sense whatsoever. I actually did a fan edit of the Karate Kid Part 2 and the Karate Kid Part 3. Because if you think about it, in the first movie, um, and this kind of goes in with my Stranger Things video, how would I fix it? This is how I'd fix it, and I did. In the first film, he is facing bullies, and he goes, and he wins a tournament, right? Spoiler alert from 1984. In the second movie, he goes, okay, I also want to talk about why Karate Kid 2 is so underrated, uh, even though it's respected. In the second one, he goes to Okinawa, and he defends himself in a death match with no rules, with nobody to help him, no referee, and it's a fight to the death. I mean, I, okay. And then in the third movie, he comes back to the States and he's afraid of another guy that he's gonna fight in another tournament. That just doesn't work for me. It doesn't. And he has so many anxieties and neuroses that he would have overcome by the time he got to part three it seems like the correct order to watch these is actually one, three, and then two. And the films work that way. In fact, I, I did, like I said, I did a, uh, a fan edit, which was mainly correcting the intros so that it's not showing me the intro uh, or, or the last couple of scenes from, uh, you know, part, part one. It's showing you the last couple of scenes uh, in, in part three when you watch uh, the, my new part three. Anyway, it's confusing. But you, when you watch part three, uh, on my version, my, that is actually part two. And that makes so much more sense because Daniel fights in a tournament and wins. And then in the second one, he fights in an even harder tournament where the guy's just trying to torture him and he wins. And then in the third one, he goes to Okinawa and you get this whole backstory of Miyagi, which informs everything you've seen up to that point and he wins in a fight to the death. 
that makes a lot more thematic sense to me to watch them in that order. Karate Kid 2 is such a fantastic sequel to Karate Kid 1. And I, I think it really gets overlooked because you think about it, everybody talks about the Karate Kid formula. Oh, there's a bully and he, and he wins. Yes, that basic framework is there, but they changed almost everything. The score is so much stronger. Bill Conti's score is gorgeous. I actually think Bill Conti's score in part three is fantastic. It's, the score is better than the film, to be honest. But his score in part two um, is probably the strongest of the original three um, Karate Kid trilogy scores. Um, the setting is completely different. Um, the culture, like the way that they integrate the culture with the story, um, I just, they, they informed, again, like I said before, they informed the Miyagi character. You learn things about him that you didn't know in the first film. Um, and it just, I, all of the character, it's a, it's such a natural progression from the first movie without just redoing the first movie, which is, which is basically what they did in the in the third one, right? You see what I'm where I'm going with that. The third one is more of a remake of the first, which is what all the worst sequels do. Anyway, I'm going long on this video, but uh, Karate Kid Three, hilariously bad, but I still love it. And seriously, try that drinking game. Every time he gets hit, down a shot, amazing time. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys next time. I'll have to think of another movie that I like and everybody else hates. Until then.